my friends are sins. In today's video, I'm going to explain to you why I've decided to risk further being classified as a massive hipster prick by diving into the world of Super 8 in 2024. I've only just started using the format and so don't have any footage back just yet to show you, but I plan to do so a lot this year and I wanted to document my experience from the outset as well as outline some of my very first impressions as somebody who's, you know, entirely new to all of this. Over the years, as something of a photographer, I've shot with and developed a whole load of different kinds of film. However, thus far, I haven't ventured into shooting moving pictures on film. This is something that I've always been intrigued by, but didn't think was really all that practical for a variety of reasons. The most easily accessible entry point into this world was meant to be Super 8, which was introduced in 1965 as this relatively affordable and more convenient format than either 35mm or 16mm, which had the tendency uh, to be flammable, apparently. Despite this history as a medium for the masses, the cost of both the film and the processing always seemed to be prohibitively expensive in the digital age, at least for me. Especially when you consider the fact that each 50 foot cartridge of a Super 8 film can only hold about 3 minutes or so of footage at the standard frame rate of 18 frames per second, even less if you go up to 24 frames or above. That just did not seem like enough to be worth it, given the price that you're paying. Recently though, I once again found myself drawn to the idea of trying out Super 8 for myself and after some research bought a Canon 514XL to do so. I'll talk a wee bit more about the camera in a minute, but before that, I should probably explain some of the reasons that I had a change of heart, because obviously the practical limitations and the cost of shooting Super 8 are still exactly the same, and it doesn't look like they're going to get any better anytime soon. If anything, they'll probably get much worse. Firstly, I realised that I was making what is a fairly basic mistake in terms of my perception of the purpose of Super 8, at least in terms of comparing it to digital. Rather than being something that I would shoot constantly, Super 8 instead lends itself really nicely to capturing a collection of moments, imbuing them with its characteristic hazy nostalgia. It seemed perfect for preserving snippets of life in an otherwise imperfect way. A few years back I went through a period where instead of taking photographs I would record really short clips on an old crappy Polaroid cube uh, kind of GoPro style thing without any stabilisation, weirdly enough. But I would put them together in mini reflections, a kind of a visual diary. Now, each of these was less than a minute long so that I could share them on Instagram basically, but they still managed somehow in that time period to cement memories in quite a satisfying way and I still like going back to watch them. They're on YouTube somewhere if you can find them. With that in mind, all of a sudden the limitations of 3 minutes 20 seconds the Super 8 has got suddenly doesn't seem all that short at all. It got me kind of thinking that a single cartridge could actually be perfect for putting together a digestible montage of a special occasion. Shifting my frame of reference in this way opened up the possibilities as opposed to seeing the restrictions. Now this is all very well and good right, but the biggest consideration obviously still remains the cost. Because after all, if the process was cheap, and it wouldn't really matter how much footage a single cartridge provided because uh, you could just buy more of them. As we know, however, that unfortunately is not the case. The combined total cost of the film, development and the digitisation can easily come in at over 100 quid. And when I looked previously, there weren't even a huge number of places that offered the service anyway. After digging about for a wee bit, I found this place called Gage Film somewhere in England who offer these bundle deals that come in at about 80 quid for a single film processed and scanned at 2K resolution. Now there's a bunch of variables here that can make things cheaper or a bit more expensive or a lot more expensive actually depending on what you select, you know whether you have 3K resolution or 4K or whatever else, but the important thing is that the 80 quid for the film and all the, you know, the digitisation bits seemed like a fairly reasonable cost if you consider the use of Super 8 as a special luxury for a particular project or use case, so like going on holiday or something like that. You will note that up until now I haven't really mentioned the particular look of Super 8 film to any real extent, and that's because the aesthetic, as it were, genuinely hasn't really been a significant consideration in my calculation. Yes, it is obviously true that Super 8 has got a distinct look from digital footage 
and I'm obviously interested in exploring that for myself. I mean, look, I've got all this weird analog gear that I like to play about with. However, to be honest, it is fairly low quality and I'm much more curious about the actual process itself. The act and experience of shooting with these older cameras and the tangibility of such a fixed medium where you can't just go back and reshoot things over and over again. This is probably a good point to talk a wee bit about my choice of camera. If you look about, you'll find that there are loads and loads of different Super 8 cameras out there. And as I mentioned earlier, I picked up a Canon 514XL. I didn't actually plan on getting one of these, as they are a wee bit more expensive. Uh, partly because, I have to admit, they are one of the most commonly referenced models on YouTube. However, as I've discovered, there's actually some pretty good reasons for that. And a friend of mine locally happened to be selling one whilst I was looking, so that was fortuitous and how I ended up with this. There's a bunch of things that I like about the 514XL. First of all, it's got an automatic exposure system, which means that you don't need to worry about using an external light meter or anything like that. It's got a decent enough zoom and also an f1.4 lens, which, if you're not familiar with aperture values, allows it to shoot in fairly low light. It's powered by just two AA batteries, which is in contrast to some other models, which use harder to find, sometimes discontinued batteries. And most importantly of all, it is really lightweight. The whole thing, as you can hopefully see here, is much more compact than I expected it to be, which is really important since I wanted to use it for travel first and foremost. So far, I've only shot one film with the Super 8, which was a cartridge of Kodak 500T. I won't go into all the details of the film types in this video, but I used that specifically because it's high ISO and I was shooting indoors at a Hugman A party, which, by the way, is the Scottish New Year if you're not familiar. My first impressions have been that shooting Super 8 is a really satisfying experience. It's quite unlike anything else I've used because, first of all, there's no sound recorded with standard Super 8, but there's also a real physicality to the process. You can hear and almost feel the shutter opening and closing, and knowing that it's capturing individual frames on film as it does so is kind of a magical thing. I will say that I have found it really difficult to focus the 514XL because it is a really tiny viewfinder, and even just to see through it, I have to take off my glasses. And when you're doing that in low light, then it feels almost impossible. For the part A, I ended up zone focusing or guessing the distance a lot of the time as a result. So everything could well be completely out of focus, especially as I was shooting at f1.4. So I guess we'll see. This is one area where getting a slightly bigger camera might be of benefit. For example, my friend Keith lent me his Casina recently, which, despite being markedly chunkier, is a much easier camera to focus through with its larger viewfinder. So that is something to consider and perhaps a trade-off if you're getting a larger camera, uh, which is something I might think about in the future. Whilst I'm waiting for the footage to come back from Gage to see just how terrible the shots are from my first cartridge, I'm already planning when I'll be shooting more Super 8 next. I find myself kind of wanting to use it all of the time, which is financially potentially quite dangerous. However, I'm going to be travelling a lot this year and my plan is to do a series of mini films on Super 8 throughout 2024 that I can then compile at the end and hopefully by then I'll have learned how to focus the fucking thing. If you're interested in any of this, please keep an eye out on the channel. Let me know if you've got any questions about it because I'll be doing more videos on the subject as we go. If you find yourself wanting to support my foolish artistic endeavours in any way, you should consider perhaps, maybe, possibly signing up to the Patreon. I upload a bunch of stuff on there and whilst I hate doing these kind of plugs, it does help cover the cost of some of these experiments and it's very much appreciated. With that, I'm going to put my begging cap away. Thank you for watching. See you later.